Okay, so I wanna show you a pretty easy lighting trick that I use sometimes when I'm in this kind of situation where the lighting that I have is kind of going in the right direction, but it's just missing a whole bunch of pieces. Where I'm pulling this example from is a render I did recently, this one, where I was in this situation and I ended up doing the thing I'm about to show you to get this result right here. So here's the before and the after. So the basic idea here is just faking indirect or bounce lighting with just some normal lights, but I'll show you exactly how this works and when to use it and um, when not to use it. So in this case, it is highlighting quite an extreme version of this effect. So it's not always gonna be th this extreme. And most of the time when I use it, it's a lot more subtle than this, but it can still, all, uh, usually when I use it, it, it adds just a really nice touch uh, where it's visible and just kind of gives it that more special kind of feeling that you can see here. So how exactly do you do this? Let me show you. Um, so here, here we are in this scene. We have just some spotlights up here, which are the main lights that are casting kind of this direct uh, kind of faking sunlight, I guess. So the direct light is just coming, the kind of the main lighting is already done here. So the light is just coming from the top from these uh, three spotlights up here. And that's just shining down there. And you can see that kind of just, that's what that is there. So the problem is there's all these surrounding areas which are silhouetted and I want more light to be kind of radiating from that bright point into the, all these other areas. So there's a bunch of ways to do that. You could do things like increase the exposure, uh, but that might not always give you the look you want. You could also do something like increase the brightness of the floor. Again, just might not give you the look you want because say I, say I do this, I increase the brightness of the floor. It does kind of increase the amount of light reflecting off the floor, but the problem is the floor is really bright now and there's all the tiles look kind of weird. So that might not be a desirable solution either. So something you'll see pretty often in 3D is kind of just faking this effect by adding in lights. So here are all the lights that we're gonna be adding in. I'll show you kind of one by one what this is doing. But if I just toggle this on and off, you can see that kind of accentuates the bounce lighting that's already there and just makes it feel nicer, but still natural. So let's go, through, let's go through this one by one and I'll show you where this starts. So the first one I added was this one right here. So this is just an area light. And the reason I like using area lights instead of spot or point or anything is because it gives you a very easy directional control. So it's shining right in the direction that I want and not illuminating areas that I don't want this in. Uh, and it also is really easy to make this, it's, it's just soft lighting by default because it's already a meter in diameter by default. So that's why I like using that. And then you can also control the spread on this as well. So you can make this a direct beam or you can make it all the way up to like 180 degrees outwards. Uh, so mine is turned down a little bit, but basically the, the key that I want to show you here is you have to add these lights in areas that make sense for there to be light. Okay. So you can see that there's all this direct light, kind of this fake, uh, you could say sunlight coming in the scene here. So the, the sunlight is hitting the ground and then there's already actually indirect light in here. If you look at this, the indirect light is just the light that bounces off of something onto something else. So for example, the light that's hitting the floor is bouncing up onto like the underside of this ring. You can see all that there. Uh, up here, the bright part of this, the top of this ring underneath here, that's all indirect light that's bouncing off of the floor, bouncing upwards, hitting this thing. And that's what is lighting that up right there. So this effect is not uh, something that is always faked, right? Like it, there's always indirect lighting in the scene, no matter what. But if you want to accentuate that, you have to add the lights in areas where it makes sense for there to be indirect lighting. So basically what I look for when I'm doing this is where are the areas that there's already some indirect light, but maybe not enough and maybe some uh, areas that I can beef it up a little bit. So if you add an area light, let's just look at this first one. Um, the power is very low, so it's only at 160 watts, which is, this effect is already quite extreme what I'm showing you, so I'd probably go lower even than that uh, in, a, in something that's not an example of this. Uh, like just in some other random render that I would do, I'd probably go lower than 160, but just to show you exactly what's really happening, I'll, I'll keep it on high here. And this was actually the, the value that I used in the render, but most renders aren't this extreme. Okay, so we have this area light. And if you notice, if I just go to where this light actually is and I rotate around it, it's pretty much in the spot where there is light already reflect, reflecting, right? So it's kind of like right around here in this patch of sunlight. That's kind of where roughly where I've placed it. And so it's just shining the light right up on there. Just again, enhancing where the light should already be coming from just 
kind of pushing that effect a little bit further in the direction that I, I want it to go. So the next one, I have this area light here. Uh, let's just see what this one is doing. I added this one just for this video, just to kind of make the walls a little bit brighter, just to really show what this is doing. There's an and same thing here. It's not very bright. Uh, this one, sorry, this one actually is quite a bit brighter. Um, and the, sometimes you just have to turn it up for it to kind of reach the wall if it's a bit further away. Um, but anyways, the next one is this one over here. So this is adding again, same, same exact thing. I'm just going to keep showing you this. So we have this one right down here where there's, uh, this patch of sunlight where it kind of makes sense where it would be lots of light bouncing out of that area onto other objects. And so that's bouncing up onto there. And, uh, again, this one's very low. I have this, uh, size just kind of stretched out over here. Now, something you want to be careful of is if you notice here, uh, this object is th this light rather is intersecting on these chains right here. You want to be careful of that because sometimes you get a, a really harsh line on your objects. So just be aware that you can decrease the realism if you're not careful with this. So uh, I, I don't think it matters in this one. You can't really see it, but just be careful of that because it will ruin everything if you accidentally leave that like intersecting with an object in the wrong spot. Okay, so the next one I have another light, which is actually pointing towards the camera in this one, which is kind of highlighting the floor. So this, I still think this actually does make sense because if you think about where the light would be going, you just have to kind of trace it back, right? So the light's coming from the top, hitting the floor, hitting this ring, and it would probably make sense. This whole, it could either be bouncing off of that or it could be bouncing off of just the whole bright area behind all this stuff. So it kind of makes sense for there to be some light coming from, from that direction anyways. So I'm okay kind of enhancing that and, and faking it a little bit with an area light that's pointing in that direction. Because again, it's bright coming from that way. So it's okay to just kind of fake that a little bit, right? And we have another one over here, um, an area light, which is just pointing up in this opposite direction. This is a this is another one that I added specifically for this video just to kind of um, make the thumbnail look better. But that's just kind of, it was really dark over there. So I just wanted to light it up a little bit. So that's what that's doing. And then the final one is this big point light in the middle of the scene, which just kind of tops it all off. So one thing that was happening was I just felt like there wasn't quite enough light coming from that back, the room kind of behind the ring there. And so adding one point light, which I'll show you here, one big point light in the middle. This one's very bright at 12,500 watts. Uh, that's much, much higher than I would usually go with this. But in this case, it, you know, it kind of makes a bit of sense and just looks better. Um, you can see how much bright light is hitting this spot behind here. So it, you know, it kind of makes sense that this one it would have to be brighter to actually be visible. Um, so that's there. And normally I would use actually a bigger radius, like minimum a meter. So I would recommend turn that up just because you want it to be quite big and soft. If you're trying to um, enhance a big and soft reflection, like this would be, this is kind of going to cause a really soft reflection right here, this big patch of light. It's almost like another light itself, uh, a big patch of reflecting light. That's a trick you see a lot in photography where if you're taking a portrait of someone, you you might literally hold a piece of paper on the opposite side of their face where the sun's coming from, and that can be this exact same effect. Uh, instead of a, an area light, it's just a piece of paper which is reflecting the sunlight, so it's the same kind of thing. Anyways, um, yeah, the key here is make sure it makes sense. Like, think about where the direction of light is actually coming from and then place light strateg strategically in those areas. You want to color match it. So if the light is going to be, um, you know, like everything's kind of warm tones in here. So I want to match the light to be a little bit warm to match that. So it makes sense. Um, you can see if I make it white, it looks a little bit strange. As soon as it gets warm, it kind of fits in a little bit better. So obviously just color match it to whatever other objects in your, in your scene. And then, Try to keep it subtle as well, because if you overdo it, the realism breaks really, really fast. So for example, if I just crank this one, uh, let's just find one that's pointing this way. And let's just like 10 X this. Um, you can see it starts to look interesting, but pretty fake uh, quickly, right? And if I go really, really extreme with it, it just completely destroys everything. So um, it's you'll hit this point of it ruining everything probably faster than you'll expect. So keep it subtle if you can because this isn't uh, how light behaves in real life you're not going to have invisible lights which are are doing this um so we're kind of enhancing what's already there is the, the idea here okay one more thing that i want to mention is 
you might get this problem here where you can kind of see a big glow coming from your light. So that happens because if we're using volumetrics in the scene, so we're using a big uh, fog over everything, right? So we're using uh, just a volume scat, excuse me, just a volume scatter on this cube, which is just volumetric lighting over everything. So if you start placing lights, like bright lights in that, you might get this effect where it's like just glowing everywhere. The way you deal with that is just unchecked. You can sort of see me doing it here, but unchecked the uncheck, excuse me, the volume scatter checkbox here. So you go, just click on the light, uh, the light you want to be affecting, go over to ray visibility, and then just where it says volume scatter, uh, if I just pull this out, volume scatter, uncheck that, and I'll just do it on this one as well, uncheck that. And now we can use lights as bright as we want without uh, just having it emit into the volume. So we're basically just saying, hey, light up everything, but don't affect the volume at all. That's what happens when you uncheck that. One other thing too is if you have some reflective surfaces, I'll just add a, an example of a reflective surface right here. So if I just have this on, um, yeah, so you might run into this problem where you can see uh, the actual light itself in the, the reflection of something. So for example, if I have a point light here, we can't see the actual light in the scene, but in the reflection, we can see the light, which is a problem if you have uh, water or glass or something like that, where the reflection of the light shows a big white circle or square. The way you can deal with that, uh, the first thing you could try is just uncheck this checkbox called multiple importance. So that's in the light settings underneath where you adjust the power and everything. Multiple importance, if you just take that off, that will reduce that or actually just remove it. The other thing you can do is uh, uncheck, if I just turn this back on, if you uncheck uh, the glossy ray visibility, that can help this as well if it's uh, like giving you too much glossy reflections and you kind of want to tone that down a little bit or remove it. That's a way to do that. So in, in uh, this scene, what I did for all these lights, I think, was just take the glossy completely off. So it's just not, yeah, you can see there, um, it's just not using that at all right there. And that just makes it fit in a little bit better in this case. I don't always do that. I usually don't. But uh, in this case, it just made it work a lot better. I maybe could have just done this where I turned the power way down. Um, let's just see what that looks like. Yeah, like same kind of thing. It just doesn't give quite the same effect, uh, but it's a, it's a different look. You can go for that if you want. But uh, I opted for just turning the glossy off and kind of going for this more rough look. So yeah, that's it for this one. So by the way, a bunch of the assets in this render are from the new fantasy course, like the floor, chest, uh, debris piles, arches, and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff is from the, the new fantasy environments course. So I'll leave a link below to that if you want to check out the new course. And other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.